Alright everybody, um, if you're wondering why I haven't made a video in a very long time, my voice was getting better and then it kind of took like a mini dive there again for a few days and now we're back to decent again, so here we are making a video. As you can tell, I'm playing DD1. Why am I playing Darkest Dungeon 1? I'm just going to refer to it as Darkest Dungeon for now, it's a little easier. Um... The reason why I'm playing it is apparently the Vermintide update got a huge update. So we're going to play to see the end of that. And um, obviously I said I was going to take a break from DD2. Uh, still true. Um, I'm honestly still playing Battle Brothers. I'm going to maybe make videos on that one day about like helpful and stuff like that. And um, But for right now I think we're going to head back to Darkest Dungeon here. And like I said, the reason why we're going to do that is just because it still has some stuff I need to do in terms of mods. And um, it is a complete game for now, and something I honestly do enjoy. I understand where I left off on my tirade against Darkest Dungeon 2. I could have been a little nicer in some of my words, but all the mechanical issues I complained about I still believe to be true. But I'm not going to talk about them much in this episode here. I'll talk about them as the game gets closer to release. And as of right now, we are not near release. Well, actually, we're very close to release in the grand scheme of things. But, as I said, they are still adding stuff and trying to do who knows what. So, in the meanwhile, we're going to kind of talk about... I'm not going to narrate like I usually do the combat. And uh, if you've seen me play Vermintide, you kind of already know what's going up with Vermintide. The um, Warp Stone Mine Addiction or something is, um, I think, the disease. You obviously kill rat people and uh, I do have a few mods on not many that actually directly affect combat it's more like uh, speed uh, loot stacking so I could save grind time which is something that I think the first darkest dungeon had a little excessive of uh, I do understand the first darkest dungeon wanted you to prioritize um, greed over resources which honestly it does pretty well you do have to decide <coughs> Like, if bandages are more important than gold and all that stuff. I just think overall, the game could have maybe reduced a few of its numbers you needed to, like, upgrade stuff. Because this game did have, and does have, not did, does have a heavy, heavy grind aspect to it. And I don't think most people would say it... The game loops good enough that you do and don't mind it, I would argue. Like, when I was playing and I wasn't making any YouTube videos, the grinding aspect was a little like, oh man, it's like you really gotta go back in a bajillion times. And uh, there's pros and cons to that. One of the pros is that you obviously get to play a whole bunch, whole bunch of different parties, you get attached to different people, you get to check out all the different areas they made, and um... I would argue there's so many ways to take fights that it was kept interesting. Now, once you, like, now, now the negative, uh, the opposite can also be true, though. If you don't have a lot of time to invest in the game and you only, like, really feel comfortable with a few different parties, like, you may be like, wow, this is just the same thing over and over. Pretty much same enemy comps over and over, right? Um, I only felt like that when I was on, like, my fourth or fifth playthrough because I was doing content for YouTube. I'll admit, my first two runs, I had a blast in this game. And trust me, those first two runs, I spent a lot of time on this game. So, I would argue easily that the first 70 to 80 hours of this game, uh, I wasn't really too bored. I honestly, um, my first playthrough, I effed up so bad just everywhere. Because in my first playthrough, I looked up nothing. <coughs> yeah, I looked up nothing that... Um, I didn't prioritize the right stats. Um, my hero roster composition was a little meh. Not, it wasn't great. Uh, a lot of Vestals, <laughs> Crusaders, Lepers, Jesters. Um, I've got a couple of other people. Oh, Highwaymen, a lot of Highwaymen. Um, I just really didn't have any party composition things. I just didn't really understand like that speed and accuracy. It, there's just a lot of stuff I sucked at. Um, and because I sucked at it, it did kind of make me question the enjoyment of the game because certain enemies were a lot harder than others and my play style didn't work in certain areas, but I was like 
So this game definitely had a knowledge curve that was beyond intimidating. I will admit that, and um, that could easily ruin it for people. But overall, just getting back to the general combat, I know obviously we've gotten rid of accuracy in the second darkest dungeon here. I really do enjoy the idea of accuracy still, though, because it really does make you prioritize what your trinkets were because certain enemies had so much dodge and just there were there's a few ways to deal with that you obviously went accuracy you could have gone um you could go dodge debuff you could go like just really high mark skills maybe you know there's a lot of ways to deal with people with high accuracy and they were prioritized so i felt like if you just try to go pure damage in this game which you, you know you see my party it's pretty heavy in pure damage but there's a uh, drawbacks to that i'm also at the point in the game here where we'll get rid of that take that we'll continue i'm also at the point in the game here where like i'm have level resolve three sorry in the very intro area. This is like one of the highest power spikes. So if you're wondering like, holy crap, you're just crushing everyone. Yeah, I'm at the highest power spike. And then I'm about to dip into one of the lower power spikes where I'm gonna start doing veteran stuff. Like the ebb and flow is real nice. You feel like you finally get strong and then the game's like, all right, you got stronger, but we're about to pull the rug out from under you a little bit here. So get ready. Like it's, it's gonna get a lot harder, but then you're gonna get hit resolve four and you're gonna get all of your good stuff. Oh, let me talk about this. This was the other thing in Darkest Dungeon, not a huge fan of. This was another huge grinding aspect where it's like you could get all of these diseases and you just didn't really do anything wrong. So that is something that I think the first Darkest Dungeon really added to the grind machine. And I wish they never did because once again, it's like, you really can't control this at all on your uh, own skill. And I just think that's a bad, bad mechanic. And I've talked about that for a long time. I That's probably one of my number one complaints is that you, you shouldn't have that crippling situations every time you leave a dungeon. Um, I don't mind a chance of it. What I do mind is just the, uh, the utter, like, debilitating status all of those do so i think um i do think that was always a mistake it's still a mistake even after all these years of playing it and coming back to it it really does slow down gameplay for really nothing in my opinion it doesn't really add any extra good gameplay enemies already give you diseases so why do i have to get a lot more coming out i've always i've never been a fan of that um still to this day as i said like you know i'm not going to change my tune i think that was a design flaw to have as high as a chance as it was uh same with the negative quirks as well i always think those two were way too high i'm actually gonna try oh that's long medium now we're gonna go back on oh, medium i oh, don't know i don't want to do that one for a short we'll do the cove we'll go do the base game but yeah i always thought it was a mistake to uh have that high of a chance Solely on the fact, like, it's just, uh, do I have enough heals? It is a medium. I don't really have any stress heals. Maybe a Jester anti. What's your, what's your, um, oh, you got the warp stone, okay. Yeah, screw it, we'll take long, though. Okay. But yeah, I, I always thought that was just a severe issue. It was just like, I don't even know why. We'll take the torch rate burn. Healing skills, friendly skill, 2 HP. Self heal, okay. Mm, nah. Oh. Nah, we're good. 2%, 2 plus speed, minus, no. Sorry, I'll be, I'm gonna skip this. Um, I'm not used to all these new trinkets, so I'm gonna skip this and then come back. I am in the cove, and I forgot to bring in some stuff for my dude. I think he'll be okay. If he dies, he dies. It's, it's whatever. I don't really care about these run-throughs anymore. Um, too terribly much. But yeah, back to the grinding. I think that was honestly the worst aspect in the first Darkest Dungeon. It's just there was a heavy, heavy grind component. And uh, some of that was due to how much you needed, uh, how many people you had to level up. Um... 
like I said, the diseases and quirks you could get after. And I know some people have said, well, you were never meant to be in, like, perfect condition. And I, I do understand that. You were never meant to always escape the horrors of what you see. But I would argue for the most part, I think they could have reduced the rate of it. I think it's a little... I think the overall frequency was a little heavy, um, especially if you did well. I think what they could have done is reward the lower end stress more, uh, punish the higher end stress more than they do now, which was actually pretty heavy already, to be honest. So I'm thinking that's what they maybe could have done, with been like, okay, you know, like, um, you came out with like zero stress, so you know what we're gonna do, we're gonna have you have like only like a 2% chance to get like a negative quirk. Oh, you came out with like 40 stress? We're gonna make it like a 25% or something. I don't know, what the, I can forget what the current numbers are. But you know, make it like an exponential graph. If you walk out with like zero stress, make it like a literal, not even 5% chance, I'm talking like two or three, right? Like, maybe every five dungeon runs where you come out with like 10 stress or less, you get like a person or two at that point. If you're playing the game to that level of perfection, because I mean, that's essentially perfection. Coming out with zero stress, you are, Mwah. You know, you are like playing the game to the best of its capabilities, pretty much. Because it's hard. It's really hard because you can go through the whole dungeon, like zero stress, meet one boss at the end, and just someone stacks up like 30 to 40, and you're like, well, you know, I had zero stress the whole time. I used my campfire already, and I couldn't stall long enough to get them below 30 stress. You know, you pay the price for that. That's where the greed aspect comes in. You know, do you keep going? Do you chance getting a negative quirk because you decided to go one turn longer than you should have? Um, I think that would have been a lot better, in my honest opinion. I think, um, I think just the percent chance was way too high. I think it's like, what, 25% chance? 10? I can't remember what it is to get a negative quirk if you, uh, if you finish perfectly. It's pretty high. That's all I really remember, to be honest. And, um, it, it's far too high for how long the game went on, in my opinion. Because, um, I know you're supposed to manage money and the expense. Do you want to spend it on curing people of quirks, or do you want them to get better? Um, I just think that would have sped up the game, but still kept the difficulty there. In all honesty, as I said, you're still probably going to suck. So it's not like you're really not getting negative quirks ever, because in the early game, your skills are so low. Um, you're learning the game. Now, once you become a veteran of the game, yeah, maybe it is a little too easy. But well, that's why they made uh, the hard mode, where you know what? If it's too easy, put yourself on a time limit and then go. You know what I mean? give enemies more HP so they last longer than they do. There was ways around that and I just think um, they kind of shot the gap on it. They were like we're just going to keep it, I don't know. That's the only spot I think in the first Darkest Dungeon they really could have decreased the grinding increased reward for doing well but you still could have kept the greed and um the greed and other choice aspects, you could have just done it on an accelerated time frame. 100% battle rooms. Okay, sorry. I need to check what I was doing. Yeah, you could have you could have kept the uh, you could have kept the component of do you go greedy or not. I think that still would have been something you punish. Because obviously every time you go out to a dungeon, you want to come out with as much loot as possible. Um, I'm still perfectly okay with people not leveling up by killing creatures. I'm still fine with them having to make it through dungeons. I think all that's okay. I, don't, I really don't... I think the core gameplay of the first Darkest Dungeon is so sound and so solid in terms of what you have to do. The combat is just so good that the only thing that was broken in the game loop was the grinding. The grinding was the only thing I think I could argue that in the first game is why I wouldn't recommend it <coughs> to people. It's just like you need a lot of time because you're going to spend a lot of time, let's just be honest, you're going to spend a lot of time dying. Um, especially if you don't look anything up. Now, if you look stuff up, uh, this game's a little bit of a joke. Well, nah, I shouldn't say it. Well, it's not a joke, but I mean, like, a lot of the surprises go right out the window, right? You're probably not going to lose people to bosses. Um, you're probably not going to make dumb party composition errors. Uh, you're going to know what the curios do, so you're never going to walk in and give yourself like an affliction immediately. Where you're not going to accidentally activate the Shambler and be like, oh crap, what's this guy? 
To me, that ruins the fun. However, I get it. If you don't have like 30, 40 hours to blow in a video game, you may just want to, you know, be perfect your first time through, but still get the gameplay experience. Because I do, I genuinely do. Even coming back to the first Darkest Dungeon here, this doesn't feel weird at all. Like, the creatures don't look weird to me. The fact I have the chance to miss. The fact that I, um, my people just kind of bob up and down. I don't know. None of this feels weird to me. I played this game so much that this... I don't mind the new art style at all. I really don't. Um, I thought I would, but in all honesty, I could go either way. If they decided to keep the same art style in the other one, sure. If they decided to go with their new one, the new one, sure. Um, do I actually kind of like the animations they had in the second one? I did. Do I think it made the game? <laughs> no, not at all. But um, I think it was a nice touch. So I think there's a lot of stuff that both games could have combined. Um, I think the idea of decreasing grind in the second one was good. And I think keeping maybe more of the attachment from the first one would have been better. That's my honest opinion. Um... But here we are, but I just wanted to kind of talk about DD1 here and just kind of come back to what I liked about games, what I liked about this game, and, um, you know, just maybe where we go from here, uh, what to expect, because I will be playing more of this, but I just want to, my first video back, I wanted to talk about the game. I wanted to talk about the feel, the, the things I had issues with, the things I didn't have issue with, the uh, paths the game could have gone and paths that I'm glad they didn't go in. Um, yeah, so... It just... Like I said, first game's loop is very good. Um, I'm actually been very lucky, I really haven't missed at all. As I'll say, because I've been talking about accuracy and here I am just landing everything. Now once again, like I said, I am near my power spike, but even... <coughs> But even those 80% chancers on the uh, guy right there has been really good. But yeah, I think the creativity, the combat variety in the first game is there if you want it to be there. Now don't get me wrong, you can be very stale and very vanilla in this game because <coughs> a few heroes are definitely much better than others in terms of just if you look at it like raw mechanics wise. but. I think if you get interesting, you can take in low HP heal parties like this and just be perfectly okay. Um, if you go a higher speed, or if you go in people with self heals, or heals that do over time, you know? Because <laughs> there's something to be said about striking first in this game, and then trying to recover slightly after. Um, but also in this game, you can go slow first and not worry about it. You can say, you know, we're just going to take our lumps first and then we're going to slowly back out. Um, I do like the stress management in this game. It's like how much do you uh, take healing and how much do you allow the enemy to just keep absolutely clobbering into you? It's an absolute question you have to ask and answer because it's like, is it worth it to not kill the enemy quick and to stall them? Or do you just kind of just finish it up and then heal up with a campfire or something after? It's always a question. Because <coughs> for example, I just did all that healing, but I could get rocked with a critical here. Well, there we go. They call me Notre Dame, right? Look at that prediction. And that's what I'm saying. That's the problem. I could have gone all offensive. This guy would have died, right? If I would have done... Oops. If I would have done one offensive ability, he would have died. I wouldn't have gotten critically hit. Take that stress and stuff. Now, thankfully, it's on the flags, right? Not an issue, but if that was someone else who couldn't really stress heal, I mean, uh, heal well, that could have been a major issue, but I decided to go greedy, and it would have gotten punished. Now, the thing is, like I said, I was fortunate enough, and it was, once again, my own choice, but I brought along a fledge, so obviously I'm able to take that kind of abuse, and that's the whole point, is that I have that hero in here. I took two heroes who can take abuse in the Flag and Leopard, because on the off chance, I do just get absolutely wrecked with an ability like that in the front row. I can do something about it. It's a personal strategic t choice. And it can get rewarded, because if they do get bashed like that, it doesn't derail anything. Heretic. Tipler. Venomous. That will do you. But, um... But yeah, so I... I do feel like this game rewarded you or punished you 
for a good or bad team comp, and I think that is absolutely needed, obviously, when you play a game like this. Um, I like the dungeon layout aspect where you can get scouting, you can get surprise, the actual exploring the dungeon, uh, taking in the necessary means you need to complete the dungeon. Everything, I think, was pretty well thought out and uh, uh, massively affected the success and rate in which you finish dungeons. So, I think this game did have a lot of good aspects to it that uh, made it the game that most people probably learned to love, bought, or maybe recommend. Um, but there's always improvements in video games. I don't think I've ever played a video game where I was like, I wouldn't change a single... No, I don't think I've ever played a video game where I didn't have a single recommendation, right? Nothing's ever so perfect it may be in the moment it is but then you play a new game you're like you know might have been cool if they did that you know what i mean but as i said for example decreasing the grind and maybe adding some different animations would have really made this game go um a little further so yeah i mean there's there's there are things that could have been added um there's things that could have been fixed immediately as i was talking about the grind aspect so it's like they didn't even have to wait for better, uh, a better engine or anything. There were things they could have done right away. That would have made this game, I think in my mind, a little more player friendly. Because I don't think grinding is hard. Grinding is just a mental time consuming thing. Which like I said, it's not hard. It's just a matter of how much you're willing to spend doing something rather than how much time you're willing to get good at something. So if you're not exactly great at these games and you don't want to spend a lot of time this game was probably a nightmare for you, and you probably didn't play it. You're probably not watching this video, in all honesty. So I completely understand that. You don't really want to invest a lot of time in something where you're like, man, it just, it's going to take way too much time to get really good. It's just going to take way too much time to finish the game. And I know I've iterated that like a bajillion times, but honestly, I think that was the biggest downfall of this game. I don't even want to call it downfall because I'm, that's implying the game didn't do well. I just think that's one of the biggest turnoffs. There you go, to this game. Um. But like I said, some people loved it because of that. So it's like, oh, geez, what do you do? You know, some people really love it because of that. And other people were like, yeah, you should have just not have taken that much time. So you always have to pick and choose. Um, you're never going to obviously get everybody. And you should never look. Does that cure the uh, Blightstone? Probably not. Ah, oh, darn. Um, sure. Alright, let's see if I get ambushed, then I'll end. No, okay. Oh, I did scout. Nice. One fight, one fight, one fight. No. Okay. I'll turn off the torch. And this is also your ward for the end of the dungeon. If you did well, you could turn off the torch, collect a lot of loot, and, uh, yeah. You know. Uh, I'm just gonna back up. But yeah, so that's the first DD. I'm gonna play a little bit more, um, as I said. I just wanted to take a little break from Darkest Dungeon, clear my head, get back to the first one because there's stuff to do. Um, like I said, 1250 gold, that's the reward you get for, you know, being knowledgeable, turning off the torch, taking the antiquarian. That's what you get. Sometimes you get a lot of money. And, uh, yeah, see, see right there, I think I entered with like, yeah, I exited with zero stress. I got a disease and two negative quirks. That's the kind of stuff that just always drew me bonkers and I think it was just bad game design to be honest. Um, it's not game crippling, but it just compounds on everything else you already have to do. So I just think that's a... Uh... Oh, sorry, I only got one disease. <clears throat> that's right, you already had one. But still, I got some negative quirks and stuff. But but yeah, overall, I, um, I never really had too many complaints about this game. Other than just the literal amount of time you had to spend doing stuff. But hey, it is what it is. Thanks for watching.